Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Base Live. Can you hear you? One second. Can you hear me now? Yes, here you are. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. For those of you that are just hopping on, Diana and I have had so much fun testing our microphones out before we before we got started today. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to give everyone just a minute to hop on. I see we're getting a, a spike here. Um, for those of you that are just joining, I am Liz Pru, VP of Marketing here at BASE, and today's BASE live session is Future Skills, How to Remain Relevant During and After the Crisis. Um, we are so excited to host Diana Brandel today. She is a best-selling author and podcast host holding a degree in international administration and management specializing in office management, and throughout her career, she has worked successfully for C-level executives with global corporations such as Sony, has clients Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Mercedes, Porsche. Um, she is just absolutely fabulous, and we've been so excited to host her here today. Diana, welcome. Hello, everybody, and it's great to see the first waves coming in from all over the place. I see Chicago, I see New York City, I see Sao Paulo, and Brazil has a special meaning to my heart because my brother is married to a wonderful lady called Thais, and she is from Sao Paulo. So I have a family in Brazil, but it's good to see at least a uh, feel that you ever, everyone out there is here with us, although I cannot see you, of course, but you see us. <laughs> Yes, that's wonderful. And you are watching from, and pardon, I can't remember, where in Germany are you based? I'm based in our wonderful capital here in Berlin. It's beautiful outside. It is 5 p.m. Uh, evening time, my time here. And yeah, it's been a wonderful Monday so far. I hope every one of you is doing good out there. It's always the first day of the week. It's usually crazy, right? I'm sure you've been tackling a few challenges already. So I'm super excited to, to get into a nice uh, talk with you all today. Well, it's cocktail time for you. So if you need to grab a cocktail, I yes. am not done. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's good to see all the other ones tuning in. New Jersey is here. Canada is here. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, Chicago. I had an internship in Chicago a couple of years ago. I was uh, based in the Schaumburg area. Maybe oh, yeah. uh, you're familiar with that area. So um, I have a very close connection also to the U.S. as I've been living there a couple of years ago, working as an au pair in the Washington, D.C. Uh, metro area. So, yeah, wonderful to have an international um, crowd here. Wonderful. <laughs> Great. Yeah, my family lives near Chicago, and Schaumburg has some of the best outlet shopping or oh, just yeah. in general. So I love Schaumburg. It's very dangerous place for shoppers. I agree, Liz. <laughs> yeah, there it is. I definitely love the mall. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's familiar with Schomburg too. Stephanie's great. She's one of our um, book Hi, lovers. Liz. Hi, awesome. Stephanie. <laughs> well, for those of you that are just joining or for those of you that are new to Base Live, we do these free uh, weekly live events to host wonderful guests like Diana and provide all of you uh, with unique one of a kind content. And if again, if this is your first one, we like to keep these very casual, fun, but super valuable. So if there is a question while we're going through the chat or if you want to save it for Q&A at the end, um, feel free to do that too. But drop any and all questions or comments within the chat. Um, as you can see, Diana and I can see where you guys are um, commenting from both YouTube and Facebook, wherever you're watching from. So engage in the conversation with us. And we're really excited to get started. And to, to kick things off, I would love to ask the audience, um, if you could, this could help guide our discussion a little bit. If you could drop in the chat what industry you work in and how much technology currently plays into your role, um, that would be helpful as we, we dive into the discussion, particularly around, um, you know, automation, AI and all of that fun stuff. Um, and quick heads up, Diana, too, I believe I forgot to mention there's about a five second delay on Facebook. So if comments are coming in a bit later, that's why. Perfect. And there's the UK joining us as well. Hello, Northampton. Wonderful. <laughs> Great awesome. to see. Yeah, so many wonderful people here with us today. So I'd love to just dive right in. There has mm -hmm. been, so the pandemic, we, I think we've hit our, we're over the year and 
I don't feel right calling it an anniversary because usually that means champagne and celebration and and chocolate, right? (laughs) Yeah. The the year anniversary of this like apocalypse of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we're in a very unique position right now, whether you're in an administrative role or not, where your work situation, whether you're going back into the office, staying at home, doing it in a hybrid way, technology is still something that if, a digital transformation isn't something that your company has approached or embraced. They've been forced to over this last year. So I'd love to kick things off, just getting your thoughts on um, where in general you see digital transformation and technology playing as we move forward, where we are this stage in the, the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, of course, we, we've seen this push because of the pandemic when it comes to the digital transformation. And it's so funny when I talk to all kinds of assistants, um, when I train them, some of them say, well, we have been there already. We had our modern workplace. There was nothing new to us. We've been working remotely all the time. So it's quite interesting to see you know, who's following us now. And of course, and I'm sure we have a great mixture of organizations here today as well. I mean, not everyone has this modern working in environment. Not everyone one has the opportunities to hop in onto an Office 365, get the latest apps and tools. It's a security issue as well, of course. And also our managers, the styles. Maybe we work for a traditional manager who will not allow us to test out all these wonderful tools and apps. So he is a kind of restriction already. But um, I, I see in general, of course, a wonderful potential for us assistants out there. Because although, of course, and this is what we're going to cover uh, in, in a moment for sure, the AI, the robots, the automation, the disruption coming in. So we do hear a lot of negative um, phrases when it comes to digital transformation. But I always call it now is the best part to become creative because now it's a time when we move away from a reactor into a creator role. Because we, as assistants, we have access to so many important information. We can run initiatives. We can be someone who creates a modern workplace. Maybe not the ones buying the apps and the tools, but we know exactly what means efficiency and what means productivity. Because because this is what we bring to the workplace every single day and how we support our teams. So now is the time to synchronize even more uh, with other departments in the company and let them know what a wonderful multiplayer you are and uh, an influencer you can be when it comes to a digital workplace. And as we're going to see this moving forward for the next couple of years, even more dynamics that come in, uh, faster reactions are needed, more tools come in, more messengers, um, sometimes maybe a little bit too much. And I know a lot of assistants keep saying, oh, I just got, you know, focus on one tool and there's another one already. But I think this this is a part of the digital competence that is so desperately needed for our portfolio. So yeah, lots of chain ch- challenges, uh, but also opportunities waiting for us. Absolutely. And I think um, I almost don't like this next question because I think it, to your point, there's some negative connotation to it and that's not the intent, but we, this was the, this was probably the number one submitted question for this session and that we get a lot um, mm-hmm. is how do assistants stay relevant in a world that, um, you know, the future is all about automation and AI mm-hmm. and robotics. And the quick answer is, unless it's the matrix, you know, we're not, machines will never replace humans, especially exactly. as personal and as, um, you know, as specialized as an assistant role. But maybe we start with um, how, how should assistants just approach this idea of automation and AI to start? You mentioned, you know, it's an opportunity to think creatively, Um, but maybe more on the tactical side, like how, where should you start with that mindset? Yeah, I, I would say, and especially after this year, and I'm sure we have an audience that has been testing out tools every single day and more and more tools were introduced to your workplace that help you to become faster, more productive and more efficient. So here there's a chance for us, of course, that we can finally, out of our role, out, out of our hierarchy level, we can you know, be able to delegate stuff, what just kept us busy all the time, that kept us busy not being in a position to deep dive into some projects and initiatives 
our bosses are running and we wanted to support them. So the big chance, and we've been talking in this industry for quite some time about the fact that it's it's there to help us. It's not there to really, um, you know, lose our jobs because I think we have so much more to bring to the table, especially when it comes to the social skills, uh, empathy, emotional intelligence, creativity, like I mentioned before. So I would definitely recommend for you to stay super super hungry when it comes to new knowledge when it comes to ai when it comes to chatbots you know a lot of companies are working with chatbots now um, we go online we open up all these websites but sometimes it's part of our company so get there uh, grab the it nerd have a coffee together right now we'll have a virtual coffee together <laughs> But make sure you get the knowledge. How can I use this chat the chatbot in my work? Is there any chance that we can, uh, you know, redirect this chatbot for the needs of an assistant, especially when you uh, have a, a certain amount of assistance in your company? Maybe you're running an internal assistant network. Um, these are the topics I would grab and really bring the experts in and try to understand what this uh, tool and this application can can do to my workplace and how can I train on it and how can I show my boss how relevant I am once I train on these things? Because you are trained the trainers, you are basically the ones helping so many other people in the organization to have an understanding of these tools, especially those who are afraid. And this is where you definitely have a balance of once the technical skills, but also the social, the cultural skills to help these people to onboard with these wonderful new tools. And yes, they frighten us. Yes, they um, definitely take some of our resources because we need to train on them. But once we are competent and we know exactly the benefits that help our teams and maybe even help us to become better towards our customers, because the future assistants also have the customer uh, focus in their minds, because is this where we're going to serve even more in the future? So then I think uh, it's a wonderful win-win situation. But it starts with you know, the, the being hungry and um, definitely being ready and being also um, uh, having the courage to really learn these new wonderful tools. That's interesting. You say the future mindset is around focusing on the customer too. Would you mind elaborating a little bit on that? Absolutely. I mean, when I look back when I was working with Sony, for example, I was very much involved with customer service as well because I was preparing so many documents for my boss once he went out to customers. I was organizing events when we had so many clients coming in. So I needed to have a customer uh, mindset as well, not only looking at you know the things I have here on my desk, which is on my agenda. And I see a lot of assistants who are simply staying in their comfort zone, serving only this specific team and having this kind of style towards their leaders because this is the way the leader wants to work. But I can only recommend, especially in these turbulent times that we're in right now, uh, it's the best that you train yourself in a way that you can be used at a different department with a different manager the next week. Um, assistants who are so focused on just one manager, one team, one way of working, they have a hard time to adapt to the new ways of working. And especially when we see re, you know, structurings going on, all of a sudden departments come together. So um, especially when uh, you are dealing with customers, you have them on the phone all the time, you're dealing with assistance from other um, areas uh, of your customers. This is the way we should be trained on as well. And I think once again, there's emotional intelligence included and the right attitude in terms of serving the customer and understanding what the customer needs are. That's something that we've heard um, from several past speakers mm -hmm. as well and with um, uh, speakers that we have, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, uh, Simone White from BlackRock is speaking. Oh yeah, I know her. Yes, she's wonderful. She's speaking yes. um, either next week or the week after. And she's mentioned the same thing too with training with assistants that are brought on within an organization, the mindset around this, you know, customer focus piece you're referring to is right. you you work for the organization, you support the executive. And that mindset alone 
adds so much longevity to your role and how you approach your role and what you're thinking about. Um, so yeah, that's that's really interesting. I think that absolutely. Um, I mean, shout out to Simone. I've been sharing a stage with her a couple of years ago in London, which was an amazing conference, by the way. So I absolutely appreciate her and the way she's helping our community to become better. Um, so don't miss the talk with Simone, everyone. And yes, uh, I I remember when I was a, a junior assistant, and I did not really understand that I needed to understand the business I'm in. I was, was, once again, as I said earlier, I was super focused on my boss. I was more focused on the way he wanted to have his, his documents prepared than the way I should you know, support him in terms of when he goes out to customers. So I needed to learn to understand um, how important um, the knowledge around my business is for me. So I regularly, and it sounds maybe strange, I regularly went on our website checking what is going on on my my company's website, stock share, um, what are, you know, the vacancies are out there. Can I help with my network? Can I build bridges? Can I open up this uh, valuable network that might help my employer to find new talents? Um, you know, how is the, the situation to, uh, outside of, on social media? I mean, what is my company posting? Am I, am I a fan? Am I a follower on LinkedIn? What is the, um, the, the discussions around diversity and inclusion? How about sustainability? I mean, these are very super, super important topics that assistants should dive into as well and have an opinion, have a voice, discuss within their own peers, and also see a potential how to support their managers. So I always say, uh, f fall in love with your own company and you know, remind yourself, you know, what is the business I'm doing here? So this automatically means that you are a constant learner, that you are stepping out of a comfort zone and getting active in terms of networking, building bridges and, and meet your stakeholders. Um, because I think this is very crucial for the future role. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. Looking at like, what's your company posting um, on social media, particularly now with um, mm -hmm. organizations becoming more vocal and involved with social issues and what, you know, what is their stance on that? What initiatives do they have internally? Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. Very important. And, you know, maybe I can add this as well, especially social media. I mean, I've been delivering trainings here in Germany, especially since last year, uh, the assistant as a social media expert, as a corporate influencer, as someone who's dealing with these topics more and more. And this is something when we take this outlook into the skill set of the future. I mean, there are so many different elements we can grab. I mean, of course, the organization must give us the, the freedom to grow in this role. And first of all, it needs to be our sponsor, our boss, our manager, like I, I love to call them a sponsor because they are the ones opening a door for us or they are the ones closing that door. If they want to have a traditional assistance, of course, it's it's tougher to, to show them who we are and what we are bringing to the table, what is in our portfolio and what you know else do we have to, to, to show in our profile. So this is where you show how you are relevant when you actually look back. And I'm sure every one of you have have been reflecting on the 2020 year, which is a tough year. Um, and it's still so uh, close uh, because it was mentally a very tough year. And especially those of you who, who've been um, forced to work in a new style of working remotely. And maybe you are not that remote person because you love to go to the office. You love to meet your coworkers because I think this is where we show the importance of our role. The DNA of an assistant is being out there, you know, showing that we are here, being a motivator. Uh, being a feel good manager and being out there for the team and listen and, and act and, um, you know, be also just there to, to a go to person. And this is harder right now with the virtual world. But especially when you look back and you keep on thinking of being relevant for the future, I really want you to remind yourself how wonderful you have all been performing the past year because you were crisis managers, right? You act acted in a crisis and even if we don't own this title we've been dealing with crisis the past year uh, because you were the one keeping the team together you were the one coming with creative ideas in terms of virtual team building you were the ones maybe being there as a feedback giver to your manager because he had a tough time leading through a crisis as well and you were there uh, once again and this is our number one goal what we always will have in the future as well. You are the ones bringing efficiency and productivity, 
and uh, smart agenda planning, smart meeting planning, smart travel planning. The moment you can give time back to your manager, this is your number one goal. And make sure you note this down. I did this every time when I got my manager out of a meeting because I, I was fighting hard with the people who wanted to have him on this meeting. And I always challenged them and I said, so what is your point? If I look at the agenda, there's no need that my manager is in this meeting. So it is just a hierarchy thing. You want to have the CEO there. So why don't you bring um, someone else in the meeting? So every time when I I was the gatekeeper and I managed to, to get him out of a meeting and I saved him another one hour time that he could use strategically thinking, working on new plans and initiatives, I made a note. And whenever I had my feedback meetings, I came with a number. I said, do you want to know how much time I saved you last month? And then I had my number ready. And usually it was an oh uh -huh moment. <laughs> and he was like, wow, and yes, this is why I have you, because you bring efficiency to my agenda and you give me the time to think and to grow and to lead this company, right? And so make sure yourself. you know. <laughs> yeah, you're advocating for yourself, which is which yes. is in any role, you know, I have to do that with me in marketing. You know, if I want right. you know, my my leaders to know how base lives are doing or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you have to sometimes do that extra work to get to look into those, those insights and collect the data on the work you perform that, right. helps, you know, make your company better, the leaders you support better. Yes. And I also want to encourage these assistants out there who have a tougher time right now, because I constantly talk to them every single day in my coachings and my trainings. Yes, there are many assistants out there who saw a, a significant change in their role because travel, the bosses are not traveling anymore and probably they won't travel as much in the future because new structures and in companies and new policies. Uh, all of a sudden we found out how much money we can save when we don't send people on trips. We can do it virtually, right? We have all the tools here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden we are booking less travel. All of a sudden the meeting management changed. All of a sudden the event management changed. All of a sudden our managers became more independently out, uh, out there when they go to the work, remote workplace. All of a sudden they make their own agenda topics and they, they harmonize a few things with people. A lot of assistants keep saying, hey, I'm not involved anymore. So this is the moment where you should not hide and have a feeling like, oh, I better don't say anything out loud that I have less to do. No, that's the moment where you actually do the talk that is necessary with your sponsor. And before that, of course, you, you're going to be prepared and you think about the ways how I can stay relevant in other roles, and other functions, because diversity and inclusion is an important topic to me. So maybe I can go in this field and I can support uh, our department when it comes to these questions. Sustainability is another issue. I see a positive way, of course, of showing how we can uh, become more sustainable in the way we operate every single day. I mentioned social media before. This is an area where I see assistants uh, coming in more and more as well. And also the whole people and feel good management area where you show as a, a mediator, as a mentor, as a coach, even if we don't have a certification to, to be, be a coach, but you act as a coach every single day and make sure that you bring this also to the discussion table and you talk together in a very open, honest dialogue, being very transparent. Um, how can I, you know, keep keep uh, keep uh, talking about new fields and um and this is where a leader is there for you uh, a leader opens doors for you and it helps you to grow with these roles G get you on a training and and help you to explore these new areas yeah so don't hide it's um I, i'm looking at some of the comments here and veronica on youtube said that before covid um they were assistant to the coo with main duties making appointments lunch menus mm -hmm. Assistant. And through the pandemic, that shifted and changed to being the assistant to the IT director. Yes. Love yes. a group of coworkers, um, you know, who engage via social media. It looks like in their Microsoft team. And I, I've, it's, it's just so. It's always so um, impressive to me that the assistant role can pivot like that yes. to supporting a completely different department. But, you know, be that senior leader still with what they're doing. And that's right. something I remember as well. 
And honestly, when I look back at my career, I mean, I'm now in my fifth year being an entrepreneur and, you know, running my own business uh, as a trainer, consultant and coach and, and writer. And um, but when I look back at the career I had and the function I was in, I, I was never a, a classical assistant. I always had these side projects, which I forced, which I pushed, where I offered myself, where I was the one holding up a hand saying, hey, I'm in. I'm, I'm sure I'm bringing the right strength. I, I bring the right talents. So don't wait for an invitation right now. It's, it's, it's tricky if we wait for this tab on our shoulder, like, hey, do you want to jump, jump on this project? Do you want to go and run this initiative? Do you want to support me here in terms of, you know, finding uh, this, this new way of working? No, it's now exactly what I said earlier at the time to become creative and to, to promote yourself, to promote your brand, to believe, first of all, in your brand. And hey, you are ready for these steps. And we assistants, we are super agile. And we know exactly what change means. You know, look back all these years when, you know, the typewriters were still out there and then the computers came and all, all these secretaries back then, they were super nervous because they thought no one is going to come and ask me for a favor because now they can type on their own. But hey, we pivoted. And right now it's the technology. It's the transformation where we keep pivoting and find new ways of operating and find new ways of really being vocal about the way we want to work in the future only happen when you have this partnership with your executive and when you know your goals your um, expectations about the role and when you also understand the goals of your manager and this is something i want to add when i earlier said get to know your business get to know your company have a feeling what's happening but also get to know the goals of your manager. I mean, I was I was so junior all these years when I thought I don't need to know all these goals of my manager. He's going to tell me what to do, right? But this changed massively throughout the past years and it will change even more, especially when we see millennials managers coming more and more to the C-suite. And these have such a different expectations of our role. Um, and this is why we're going to be forced to make a change here. It's um, I, I want to talk about millennial managers specifically, but um, first I saw some good uh, questions coming in in the comments while we're on this topic. Yes. Uh, Veronica on YouTube asked, um, how do you find your voice? Because sometimes the second guessing stops you from moving forward, which is mm -hmm. so true, no matter what role or industry you're in. That, that little voice back here tends to get in the way. <laughs> yes, it's the imposter syndrome. I'm sure every one of you knows this horrible term because it's so connected, especially to us women, because we always believe that we're not, not good enough, we're not ready enough for that next step, and how can I run a project? I never know. I never knew until I met my millennial managers all these years back, and all of a sudden I was a supervisor. All of a sudden I was forced to lead three people, and no one trained me. I had to, to learn it the hard way, which was not always easy. Um, but now I would even say, be prepared for that. I go on trainings, find a coach, find a mentor, find your peers and test to become more vocal, test out what others are doing. And yes, it's a personality thing. You know, the introverts will have a harder time than the extroverts. Um, I'm running a training here in Germany, which has been very successful. The assistant, how to become an online meeting uh, moderator, because, you know, we are so busy in organizing online meetings, online events, and yes, we are writing the minutes, but why not being actually the moderator? Why not also here giving efficiency into the hands of our managers, taking this role uh, on our shoulders and also see all of a sudden, hey, there's a different positioning here. There's yep. a different visibility here because once you are leading such an online meeting, the audience will say, wow, I didn't know she can do that too. <laughs> and here is another strength, right? And I think the strength is in us. I think it's the way how we are actually um, challenging ourselves to go out of this comfort zone and to open the door. And even if we are not 100% prepared, uh, we don't need to be 100%, but this is the push, uh, the pressure we give us uh, in, a, in a certain way. I remember uh, when I was an assistant, I always waited until I'm 100% right. But no, sometimes the 80% is absolutely fine enough because you're going to miss an opportunity out there yep. if you don't jump on that 80% that is already part of your skill set. So um, being on you know events like this one here, finding your community and base has an incredible community, you know, find your 
one-on-one -on -one mentor as well, especially those who are already bold and vocal and who have a brand already. I think this is also crucial to, to really work on a one-on-one -on -one here as well. I always had a mentor that helped me to shape my brand. Me too. I have a mentor even um, in marketing. You know, I think everyone should have a mentor. It's just Absolutely. because you need that that outside perspective too to help you. And I love that you said too um, that lean into what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the eighty percent piece is crucial. I actually just went through that mm -hmm. last week with. Um, you guys know Jeremy, our wonderful head of product here, who's hosted several base live sessions. And we were working on, you know, some different initiatives and support and mm -hmm. supporting. And he's like, just go based on what you know and what you believe in. And then, you know, we can we can go from there. Otherwise, you're just you're not going to move forward. You're not going to. Exactly. Keep right. Exactly. And, you know, we do a lot of overthinking in our role. And let's face it. I mean, I don't know how many wonderful gentlemen that are joining us here today, but especially as women. And I've been in the same boat. I always take a lot of things personal, very emotional. So the moment my manager texts me and I feel like, oh, that was a pretty short message. And he didn't say a proper hi and a proper bye. So <laughs> am, I, am I fired tomorrow? <laughs> you know, we do no. the overthinking. We yeah. always think it's us who are doing something mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah. But, you know, go on, this, go on this adventure. And I've been on, on an adventure nearly five years now. I mean, I was a passionate assistant. Uh, assistant. I've never thought that I would run my own business, but I was ready for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I jumped into this, uh, I learned how to swim and there are quite some bumpy waves out there. But the moment you stay in your comfort zone, nothing will change. And right now this world uh, is so dynamic. Um, and, you know, so many things are happening in our industry. And unfortunately, the statistics are not on our side. I mean, when you look at the statistics at the World Economic Forum, when you see that the top 10 declining roles, we made it to number two. And this is shocking. And this is a message. And this is alerting. So we need to have a discussion why this is the case. So I'm sure these people who did this job record, and by the way, I highly recommend for you to read this, and we're going to put this in the links for you when Liz is sending out a message for you, because that's a very interesting job report all assistants should read uh, when it comes to the future of jobs and why we are on number two. I mean, of course, they think of a very traditional way an assistant is operating, but I'm sure many of you who are joining us here today, they are not traditional assistants anymore. You found your niches. Is it project management? Is it event management? Is it uh, technology? Is it training, already delivering trainings inside the company, helping other assistants to grow? As I said earlier, train the train programs. Um, diversity and inclusion. I even see assistants who are becoming uh, advocates when it comes to cybersecurity. This is also a way how you connect with technology, especially when you put the security part in this discussion. And I know it's not a very sexy topic, let's call it this way, um, but it's super, super important because we need to be aware uh, if the tools we're working with are secure and how can I you know, work in a secure environment. Um, so find niches. I think this is a very important message I want to share with you. And um, a couple of years ago, Elon Musk, I always love to share this story, uh, when his assistant was uh, approaching him asking for a raise, he said, well, let's do a quick test. I'm going to send you on a two weeks paid vacation and I'm going to find out, out if I need you here because, hey, I'm a techie. I, I book my flights uh, with my app and I'm pretty tech savvy, so I know how to do that. And the little communication and the little organization, the little coordination, that's not a big deal, right? So, of course, everyone was guessing, oh, I'm sure he's going to call his uh, back then assistant called Mary Beth after two hours asking, come back, I'm lost without you. But he did not because he found out that he is not, he, he does not need a generalist in the future. He needs an expert. He needs a specialist. So this is now our call to action. And this was years ago, but you see the millennial manager mindset there. Mm -hmm. um, our call to action to find new niches. And I've been mentioning a few before, like social media, diversity, inclusion, technology, so much more. This is the way we should jump on these opportunities right now. First, well, with Elon Musk, he that's not the way I want to go on a vacation, even if oh, it's no. <laughs> I'm like so I'm stressed out the whole time that you're I know. 
He's beyond. Um, but no, that is that is a really great point. And um, I, I put up here too. one of the, it's kind of relevant and will lean us into the millennial managers discussion. Um, as he on YouTube said that um, they support two executives far more interested in the work of one of them um, and not spending as much time for the other and advice on doing that. And I think um, Stephanie Blackwell actually had commented that, you know, try different things, try what you're doing, see with what works if that translates with one executive to the other. We see that a ton at base. Um, I'll actually include this in our recap email in our last space live um, with Whitney, uh, Kelso, who she's in an EA at a Fortune 50 healthcare company and had said her, she supports two executives. They're like 100% different <laughs> and quick base plug, she leverages base digests and customizes each of their digests based on how they engage with her. One of them loves decision stream in there. One of them loves our decision stream feature sent separately. So there are, and they weren't even interested in digest or any sort of weekly briefing before she introduced base, but because she took the initiative and had said, hey, I'm gonna do this thing. You like it this way, you like it this way. It's going to make everyone's lives way easier. And they said, yeah, that, that works great. But slight tweaks and customization based on how they prefer to be engaged with. But it was that initiative that was taken to say, hey, I'm going to start doing this. You don't know that you need this, but you do. And that was all it took. Yes, I remember I was once working for three board members at the same time, and they were all so different. I mean, I had one manager who had, and uh, it's still strange when I say this out loud, he had, I think, 31,000 emails, unread emails in his Outlook. Uh, I think the first day I started working for him, I wanted to close the outlet right away. And then the other one was a zero inbox manager type. You know, he always wanted to have a zero inbox when he, he finished his day, which was, of course, more in my favor as well. But totally different types, both millennials, both micromanagers in, in many ways. And this uh, was quite interesting for me when I started working in the startup business, coming from a very traditional company, how I learned um, to work with this new, uh, this new species of managers, how I like to call them sometimes. And I can tell you it's a wonderful opportunity to work with younger managers out there. And yes, they are challenging. And yes, they demand a lot of technology uh, expertise from you. And because they are super tech savvy themselves, but you can grow with these managers because they see us already as their business partner. They want a lot of times a strategic assistant. They don't want the typical um, assistant, the classical assistant anymore. And I, I learned it right. also in many situations. Um, the moment where my boss started booking his own flights, the other boss was ordering the catering and I was sitting between them and I was like, okay, so what's my job here? And they said, well, um, we have a couple of more things for you. First of all, you got to run a team as of next month and you got to be responsible for the free office managers. And by the way, we want to create some new ways of working. So why not creating some ideas with your team? So all of a sudden I was more involved in the business and more involved with other stakeholders in my company and not directly organizing, coordinating for my managers, mm -hmm. which made it tough for me in the beginning to understand this switch and the shift, I needed to have the shift in my mindset, first of all, yeah. Challenging, but it yes. worth. Totally. Um, mm -hmm. We uh, regard, well, we have a bunch of questions, but I wanna mm -hmm. talk briefly about a little bit more about millennial managers, because I think um, it's, it can be a little scary because like you said, a lot of changes, a lot of um, pivoting, typically, you know, it's in um, some sort of tech startup-y type of envi environment, or that's where they have come from, where things move very fast, they change mm -hmm. very fast. Um, but I think the, to your point, the benefit there is that they're more open to change. And if you say, well, just one thing of, hey, this is how this will make X and X better. Yes. They're like, great, run with it, go. Exactly. And I think especially when it comes to our emotional intelligence and the way we are em empathy leaders as assistants, um, you meet a lot of millennials. And of course, it's a totally personality discussion, right? So you cannot say they are all this way. Um, but the managers I met, the managers I work with, and a lot of feedback I get from my clients, 
um, they especially need you as their sparing partners when it comes to these social aspects. They expect from you to be a tech savvy assistant. There is no discussion here. That's absolutely uh, non-negotiable. But um, you can teach them so many ways when it comes to um, emotional intelligence, how to lead with empathy, how to lead, for example, also conflict management in the remote workplace. I think these are the topics where you should jump on right now, how you can do an onboarding in a virtual remote place. Um, uh, so these are the things we, we're going to face in the next time as well, because um, this pandemic is still out there and a lot of you know, companies are rethinking their ways of operating. Um, so this is where we need assistance when it comes to these onboarding, bringing people on board and help, helping them to understand the ways of working, the, the atmosphere we have, the culture. Um, so I think as a culture manager, you are so essential because millennials are super, super, super expert when it comes to structure and know exactly what they want. But the culture aspect is still something that can be in your hands. And especially when you look at functions such as a chief digital officer, the chief technology officer, the chief information officer, when you have an opportunity to work with these people, no matter if they are millennials or not, but a lot of times there are younger managers out there on these positions because they are the, the, the drivers when it comes to the digital transformation. I would always say go for this role, you know, send out an application because this is where the future happens. And this is these are the, the people who really push the future and push the modern day working environment in a company. And this is where assistants belong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to where as we're kind of I know we're we're at about 20 minutes left. So we'll we'll move into Q&A. But before we we dive into that completely, I'd love to talk a little bit about um, with all this rapid change, with all this pivoting, probably the most some folks have done in their entire tenure in this position. How have you found personally mental health and just check-ins on what you're doing to be important in um, in your role and, and how you work? Well, I mean, I can only say there's one reason why resilience, stress tolerance is on the list of the top, top 10 skills of 2025 coming out from the World Economic Forum, right? I've been mentioning this report before, The Future of Jobs, uh, where we landed on number two of this hor horrible statistics. But at the same time, when you look at the top 10 skills that came out and you see that there's an area for working with people and self-management, and this is where the resilient belongs and mindfulness belongs. I think there's another wonderful opportunity for you to grow and to be a leader close to your leader when it's, it's something that we need to address in an organization. And mental health is something we've been really, really stressed with the past, especially the past year, because we are not talking about burnouts and depression. We are talking right now about uh, uh, phrases such as digital burnouts, because we're sitting in front of the webcam the whole day and we don't see colleagues anymore. We, we have the social distancing issue. So we see a lot of troubles when it comes to mental health and there needs to be specific people who are um, supporting with these topics, helping the team, helping the managers to, to bring these people on board and to address them in a very transparent way and not to hide it. Because sometimes it's something not very comfortable and we better hide it. But I think that's not a clever strategy. So make sure that you put these topics on uh, leadership agendas, that they are discussed and they are heard and that are, are discussed and maybe sometimes it needs a committee for that you know and this can also come close to the diversity and inclusion work that needs to be done in companies and i have to tell you i struggled as well when it comes to mental health i mean i had to pivot my complete business and I've been traveling the world. I had so many great locations on my 2020 agenda. I was supposed to go to New Zealand, to the US, to Canada, all over Europe. And all of a sudden, the cancellations came in. And this made something with me. So it took, it took a while to fully understand the opportunities that come in a crisis and that come with change. And this is uh, going forward, I think, is the best strategy you can do. But don't hide. And once again, that's that's the moment where you need to have a mentor close to you that helps you with these issues if you are struggling. I cannot hear you anymore, Liz. 
Sorry, I muted myself. Oh. <laughs> My dog well, it lost you. <laughs> I know. I thought we no, we're not going through what happened earlier. Kid. Um, <laughs> I know my dog was barking and um, I didn't want to. Oh, yeah. I'm glad my Phoebe is quiet at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Usually on my training, there's always a Phoebe moment. Right. I'm well, sure we have a lot of pet lovers out there. So give a shout out to our wonderful pets. Because yeah. they, they help us also in mental health crises, right? They're with us and they, they comfort us. And that's that's so wonderful. And I'm, I'm blessed with all the traveling I'm missing and with all the people I miss to see in real life. I, I'm just grateful for my everyday walks that I can do with Phoebe and my husband who works from home as well. So I'm, I'm truly blessed. I think my dogs, I, my Weimaraner is 14 and my, my little shelter mix is... I think seven now and like they've been so happy through this whole thing that's phoebe is that a clear <laughs> st charles yes it is oh how sweet a lot of people say is this the dog from sex in the city and i always say yes that's her <laughs> there you go well, um lady in the <laughs> in our house uh because of dogs and toddlers mm -hmm. and i think that's what lady is correct me if i'm wrong in the comments guys but yeah Great dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not an easy time at the moment. And I think we have two choices here, right? We can hide, we can stay depressive, we can, you know, feel like, oh, my, my job was so much better before the crisis. And now a lot of things are happening and my boss is not traveling anymore. And now I cannot do this and cannot do that. So that's one way of handling it. But hey, you're wasting time when you think this way. Mm -hmm. I really want you, first of all, to focus on your strength, to be aware who you are, to know yeah. your why. And this is so important that we listen to our whys. And I mean, I'm sure every one of you knows the, the wonderful Simon Sinek TED Talk. And um, it's just an incredible inspiration. So make sure you watch it if you haven't seen it. It starts with why, also the incredible book he brought out, brought out many years ago. And I constantly challenge my why. I always ask about my why. What do you want to bring to the table? What is my value proposition? And I think this helps you also to lead your adventure of the future. Um, because I mean, right now is also time to reflect on the role of the assistant in terms of do I want to stay an assistant or is it time to move on? Time to move into project management? Is it time to move into a, another expert area? Uh, and these are the, the discussions you need to have with yourself. So make sure that you check in regularly with yourself. I always put a creativity block in my agenda every single week. It's always on a Friday and it's also a non-negotiable. It's a full uh, full hour. Mm -hmm. And these are the creativity moments I need to write on new concepts, to think of topics for, for an article, for a podcast interview, whatever, yeah. but also to think of my why. And I really want to encourage you to do the same and put some specific time in your agenda where you simply work on yourself, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm gonna we're gonna dive into questions now, but, but while we're on the topic of wellness, I'm gonna drop in the chat. We're hosting um, on Administrative Professionals Day a day of wellness where we're going to have Very much. A physical workshop, but it's like physical 101. So don't don't freak out. Uh, Liz Van Voorhees, who uh, did a session at our Start Leading Summit, will be hosting that. And then our wonderful executive assistant to our CEO Paige, um, Natalie Turner, is hosting a breathwork session. So I would, I would encourage you guys to sign up for that. I just dropped the links in the chat. Um, yes, and I, I see we have a lot of pets lovers here in the crowd. Yes. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's the best. Um, Maria asked a question um, I would love to get to around mentorship. Um, mm -hmm. Maria YouTube said, how and where do you search for or find a mentor? Um, they are in the 50 plus demographic and it's been challenging and to find guidance and valuable um, advice. Yes, this is where I always say reach out to your communities. I mean, I'm a member of IAAP, for example, in the US, which is a strong network. I, I'm a member of some European associations here and they run mentoring programs, which is free for uh, for members. So maybe you want to check these out. I'm, I'm sure there are many great associations out there where you are living. Um, but, you know, the moment you sign up for groups on Facebook, you sign up for groups on LinkedIn, you connect with your peers. You 
you you listen, you read, and sometimes it's good, especially when you're new to these groups and you observe. You don't need to, pro to produce right away, and this is why I always want to take away the fear um, of people who, who still have some doubts when it comes to social media, of, of time consuming, and do I have to say something? I don't know what to pose. So why don't you just be an observer and someone who consumes? It's totally okay, and you're going to get a get, get a feeling about the atmosphere in the room, you know, uh, what are the topics, and, you know, why not just asking after being there for a while, introducing yourself, and maybe sharing some of your challenges, uh, why not practically asking, like, I would love to find out more about mentorship. Is there any expert in this group who can help me? This is what I did in the past. Uh, be proactive. Yeah. And I've really never heard of anyone saying no, you know, or have no, it's been like, no, I have no, no advice for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So, and, you know, and uh, Maria, I'm more than welcome. You you message me as well. I'm happy to connect you also with my network. If there's anyone um, maybe that I can think of that fits to your question you might have when it comes to mentoring. So drop me a message. You'll find me on LinkedIn. would love to chat with you. That's great. Um, we, I would love to have, uh, oh, we have one more question around, um, mentoring. Um, Elizabeth would like to know, um, how do you feel about, uh, diverse reverse mentoring? Um, oh, I love it. Different background. That's interesting. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, the reverse mentoring, so how I understand it is also that it's not the typical way of, I mean, let's put it this this way that the senior people tell the younger ones how that that life runs how the job runs right yeah um, so i love the fact that you know it's always a i mean win-win situation for both ways um and especially when millennials come in to the role and i remember that i was one of the younger assistants coming in to a new workplace and the colleague who has been there uh, she was a very traditional secretary back then she was super afraid of me she was super afraid. She she would she would say, "Oh, now she's coming with all the new knowledge, and it shows that I probably don't have this knowledge anymore. I'm not up to date. I'm not tech savvy." And I wanted to take this fear away from her because I, at the other side, had so many questions for her. I wanted to have her as an onboarding uh, ambassador with me and um, just to help each other. So I think it needs a culture that allows this. Um, where the reverse mentoring happens. I'm, I'm happy to say that I even have some clients here in Germany where the CEO is actively, uh, proactively supporting the reverse mentoring and the reverse coaching. So the CEO, for example, is setting such a wonderful example that he gets mentored by an intern. Can you imagine that? And it works. Yeah. It totally works. They work monthly on a, on a monthly basis. And it's just so wonderful. Every time the assistant tells me about the progress they are doing, um, the way that the intern teaches the CEO what the new work philosophy is all about, what robotics and AI means, and it's yeah. just wonderful to see that open culture. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we had a question come in. Um, Diane and I talked about it a little bit before we went live today around one time training and ongoing training and what really is the difference there what type of topics and learnings fall under that we had a few people ask about this um, after mm -hmm. seeing that you, you're our coach so could you elaborate or just provide some examples around that so hopefully, first of all, I hope you don't need to fight for training in your company. And it's still so sad to watch that assistants still need to beg for training for budgets. Um, I really fight hard for that out there when I talk to my customers because we need to have a training budget. So I always challenge assistants to put this in your appraisal talk that you get a budget for training. So don't you don't need to knock at the door every single time that there comes a flyer and you want to attend this one or that one. So try to negotiate a budget for the whole year with you can spend on. Um, this is something I did and I felt super, super flexible with this. So, um, I mean, we know that there are so many choices out there when it comes to training, um, especially when you want to work on one-on-one -on -one topics. I definitely recommend also to consider coaching, to work with a coach. I still do that. I have a coach. She's based in the UK, a wonderful lady. And I think we're going to next week, we have our next session. So I put this also on my to-do list that I regularly have sessions with her, especially when I work on a very specific topic. 
when you also say the training means for you that you want to increase your network, then of course you should come to communities, you should attend conferences, summits. Um, what I did when I was an assistant, I um, well, once I was familiar with the German market and all the summits we had and the training opportunities, I and thank, thankfully my boss bosses supported me. I even went to other countries to attend conferences with other assistants, with different perspective, with different uh, cultures. And um, so this helped me to really uh, also create a growth mindset when I was talking to American assistants and assistants from China or wherever. So, um, and I saved for that. Sometimes I even paid it myself because I really wanted to go to these places. Um, I think when you talk about finding new niches in terms of training to become experts, you should also consider certifications. And sometimes this means you're gonna be involved in a course that takes maybe half a year or three months or whatever you wanna run. So this is of course something that keeps you busy, but at the end you have a title, you have a certification, you have something to prove. And this is what I'm running right now. I'm subscribed to the Yale University in the US and I'm attending a leadership course for women. And I can tell you, it's a pretty tough one. Um, <laughs> I just, just got my grades today and well, well, I think I can do better on that. But yeah. I must say, um, it gives me such a refreshing way of looking at, at my role because I'm teaching leadership. So I want to become an expert on these topics. So I train myself in order to help others to grow. So make sure that you find what 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 works for you, what works to your schedule. I'm sure we have a lot of uh, parents here as well and maybe people who don't work full time. So this also means what is out there for your resources, what time can you offer and what is the best fit for you. But I would definitely um, look at different options and, and, and test out a few options. And don't forget, coaching can be also a wonderful opportunity to grow. Yes, absolutely. Um, Diana, this has been absolutely wonderful. We've been talking about having you on since like last I September. So this I know, is just yeah. wonderful. <laughs> and travel again. I am coming to Germany. I'm coming to Berlin, and we'll we'll have a proper catch up. Um, oh yes, it would be so great. Absolutely. And thank you, everyone, who tuned in today. Um, I hope it was beneficial for you. Make sure you reach out. I would love to continue our chat on LinkedIn, wherever you are. You want to connect with me. Uh, I would love to have you tune into the Future Assistant podcast. Uh, there are quite some German episodes, but also international guests, such as the former assistant to Jeff Bezos, a, a dear friend, and Hyatt. Um, so lots to learn, lots to discover, and lots to to connect so i would love to hear from you and thanks so much for for being with us here for raising all your questions and stay well and be blessed everyone awesome thank you all so much have a wonderful wonderful week cheers <laughs> take care